It is uh, museum quality, black sandy loam. There's nothing else like it. It's wonderful for that, and it should always be in food production. We also have an artesian well uh, from which we derive our water, so we have plenty of water for the, the sand. When we are, we're looking at uh, possibility of uh, added income, but that is not our first goal. What we do first is we look at the natural resource, what is available, how are we going to use it, uh, water and soil stewardship become way, way, way priorities at the top of our list. We feel that we have to maintain historical integrity of the farm itself and, of course, the seed stock. So, you know, all those things have to be carefully done. Uh, sustainability, in one word, is, is what it's all about. Okay. Then we say this fits or it doesn't fit. If it doesn't fit, then we have to go looking for something else. And you have, what, approximately a half an acre here? Yeah, there's, there's actually nine acres here, and there's an acre uh, that is available. Right now, I have little less than a half acre, which we feel is what we can do with the handwork, uh, keep uh, fuel costs down, uh, take care of things, not create problems, be socially responsible in that way. Exactly, yeah. You've got a lot of weeding to do because you're not into the herbicides and... No herbicides, uh, no fungicides, no pesticides. Um, there have been no chemicals used on this piece of soil for since, for well, probably at least 20 years. So okay. we're, we're very safe with that. The only time I would use something like Roundup is like on invasive species like the buckthorn. My own personal feeling is that you have favorite vegetables and is, do you get that feeling as you select seeds to grow for the program? Yes, but I don't select the seeds. Uh, Jeremiah pretty well tells me what he wants me to plant, and I'll do two things. I will trial them in the north to see if they actually will mature and produce in a normal year. Um, as I'm doing this, we definitely find some things that are our favorites, and there is there's a lot of variation in in taste, in uh, how they keep, how they store, how they, you know, turn out in a glass jar. I like some of the, the, the stranger stuff that people aren't familiar with because, you know, when you have guests in, you know, the quinoa, the amaranth, and then the huge variety of other stuff. I really got beans on my brain. They fascinate me. Okay, so, so beans that's, are your... Yeah, yeah. So if he gives me a choice, I'm going to say, yeah, let me try beans. And how many different varieties of beans are you growing this particular year? Uh, well, we're going to take the, the larger category of beans, uh, some of which are not, you know, like the green bean. But I have seven. Uh, over the years, I've probably experimented with 20, 25. That's a lot of beans. Uh, the, 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 the list of some of these is just amazingly long, hundreds of varieties. And out of these hundreds of varieties, um, is he going around the world and collecting different varieties of beans, or is it basically all United States varieties? Uh, Jeremiah has been to Southeast Asia where he has collected from individual farms, individual plantings, and of course, of course from the market. Uh, he has gone to Central America and South America and brought things back as well across the United States. And that's kind of interesting because we take some of the Southwest varieties and we think, well, you know, that's hot dairy desert. desert. And we bring them up here, and if there is a growing season long enough, they fit very nicely into the box that we live in. Sure, sure. Yeah, it's trial and error. Trial and error, spread the diversity around. Well, that's very interesting. Let's go take a look at some of the vegetables you're growing. Okay, let's start with the squash. We have four varieties of squash going. We can only do the four varieties because of the four species that will mature this far north. If I introduce the fifth one, then I introduce the possibility of crossing. These four will not cross. Okay. So this year I have uh, uh, this one, which is uh, Hopi Gray, came out of the Southwest. This one came in an envelope from Pennsylvania, uh, Pennsylvania Dutch Long Crookneck. I think it's going to be a, a good keeper. This one is Melanette Jaspi Divendi. Now, I did not grow it this year because I can't. It would 
cross with other species. So when I want my favorite squash, I have to get somebody else to plant it for me. And this one is just a great one for the microwave. Terrifically sweet. How do you cook that, Judy? Usually uh, cut it in half and clean out the seeds and add some brown sugar or uh, oleo with it and microwave it. It's wonderful. It's one of our favorite squash. Another good winter squash is Crown. It's a good keeper. We've kept them all the way up until May in the fruit cellar. Huh. And uh, what's unique characteristics about that particular one? Well, it keeps well. So you have something at the, the end of winter. It's uh, a hard shell. It has a fairly solid, thick wall. And it tastes good. It's, it's like on the, uh, the Buttercup series. Okay. It would be something comparable to that. These seeds are sent to you. You really didn't have a choice of which ones you were going to grow this year? Not unless I had grown it a year before and I had some seeds in the seed bank, yes. So okay. Jeremiah makes the, makes the call on that. Well, that's got to be a tremendous job if he's got thousands of growers around the country and keep track of who's got what. And... It, it's a growing company. Uh, you know, he started with a couple page catalog and now it's a catalog that just gets good press all the time because it's interesting. So he no longer does it by himself. He's, he adds to the staff every year. Well, tell me about this uh, big white squash. It almost looks like a variety of a Hubbard. It would probably be in the Hubbard class. It's going to have a, a hard shell. It's going to be quite heavy. Um, probably a good winter keeper. We haven't, we haven't eaten one yet. Okay. Uh, probably going to be in a range of 20 pounds or so? Yes. So you, you can feed the whole you congregation. Got a, on the that. congregation are a large, large family. Yes. Do you uh, encourage people to uh, cut it up and freeze it? Does it? Do we know if it's a good keeper in a freezer? Not until we've sampled it. Okay. Yeah. Most squash do keep in the freezer fairly well. And they make uh, fantastic soup, squash soup. Squash soup. Squash soup. Aha. Yes. Uh -huh. And how do you go about that process? Good rich uh, cream. You, you start with the squash and then blend it up and, and start adding stuff to it and 